Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Welcome to Aqam SOS, the show that discusses Islamic practices and duties by His Eminence, the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi I am your host Mohsin Shah and joining me as always Sheikh Ali Ma'ash Assalamu alaikum Sheikh Ma'ash Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullah Sheikh we're starting a new discussion today and it is the discussion on Salah What is Salah? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi al-tayibin al-tahirin Salah, the prayers, are the obligatory acts in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had ordered that his slaves, the believers, are wajib for them to practice this act every single day as far as they are breathing and they are alive. The Holy Quran states, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, uh, in one of the um, ayat فَأَقِيمُ الصَّلَاةِ in Surah An-Nisa Ayah 103 فَأَقِيمُ الصَّلَاةِ Allah orders the mu'minin to pray that uh, establish prayer and if Allah orders it means that we have to um, establish and pray then the ayah says إِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ كَانَتْ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ كِتَابًا مَوْقُوتًا the salah was prescribed on the Mu'mineen according to the times. So we have to initially pray, number one, to pray in the way that Allah had prescribed and informed us. Some people argue that, well, I can pray my heart in the way that I wish. I don't have to follow this sequence of up and down, you know, raising your head up and down and so forth. I can just pray, relax, you know, do yoga, you know, exercise and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with peace and calmness. We say that we have to see how Allah wants us to pray for Him the way that He wants. How He wants to, for us to thank Him on the way that He wants because He's the wise, He's the creator and He knows the inside out of this creation. So we rely on Allah's instructions and guidelines on how to pray to Him. And with regard to the uh, Salah as well, that anything that we do is accepted if the Salah is accepted. In Qubilat, Qubil ma siwaha. If we pray, then the rest of the A'mal will be inshallah accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. in Ruddat, if the Salah was rejected, uh, then the other A'mal and deeds will not be accepted. So the Salah plays... Um, a major part as a pillar for the believers, for, for the practice of the believers. Important for the one to pay attention to the salah. And it is a, an issue to actually to uh, raise within the youth community that the youth must make sure that they preserve and um, respect the salah times and they try to pray within the time limit not only to pray on time when the Adhan uh, goes on, but also to pray within the time limit. So if it's the Fajr time, to wake up and pray before the sunrise. Because the Barakah, the Rizq, the bounties, the graces would be in that one, okay. one and a half hour and two hours time of, of Fajr uh, time. So we have to make sure that we educate our youth, our kids, our children, um, friends, family, whoever around us to stick and abide with the rules of the Salah to make sure we don't let off the Salah go and you know, God forbid to pray the Salah after it's, it's time and do Ghada for example Ahsan Shaykh um, Do we have any narrations in regards to Salah and its importance? Well there's a hadith from the Messenger of Allah he spoke in the Messenger of Pure Family he says with this regard, he says, he is not of me, he who treats his salah without due consideration. He is not of me. Imagine that if I ignore the salah and pray whenever I wish, maybe in the weekends, you know, calculate, you know, five days of prayers. I do qada in one hour time, let's say, mm -hmm. a week, one, one hour a week, and try to ignore the salah to pray them on time. Then imagine, the Prophet says, he is not of me. 
the Prophet will reject that person who will say to Allah on the day of judgment that I am from the Ummah of the Prophet The Prophet will say, no, I'm, I'm not, I won't take you on board, I mean, God forbid. In another hadith, the Prophet he says, whoever treats his salah without due consideration uh, will not attain my intercession, shafa'ah. Imagine, again, how much we are desperate on the Day of Judgment mm -hmm. to get the intercession and shafa'ah of the Prophet So the, the daily prayers is linked to the shafa'ah of the Prophet is linked to the nearness and how close we get to, to the Prophet in that crucial important time, the Day of Judgment. So it's worth that we praise Allah, we thank Allah for all these graces and bounties that he gave us to thank Allah just 17 times a day. I mean, we have 17 rak'ah wajib to pray a day. So why not spend 17 minutes, you know, at least, of to pray to Allah? Of 24 hours, let's think about it. Exactly. 17 minutes of 24 hours is nothing. How much we waste time on TV shows and on going to restaurants and coffee shops. So uh, you say on, on amusement. Exactly. Um, let's be honest, a lot of people waste their time on, on just wasting time. Things with, with no sort of benefit whatsoever. This time could be invested in Salah. Exactly. And we are in a position of testing. Allah is testing us. Mm -hmm. Would we be thankful to Him or we reject His orders? Imma shakiran wa imma kafura. To be thankful or disobedient. Na'udhu billah. Um, and there's a story about a man when the Prophet ﷺ went inside the mosque and he saw a man was praying so quick. So the Prophet ﷺ, he raised the issue and he said, he pecks like a crow. If he dies and his salah is like this, he will die with other than my religion. Imagine mm -hmm. how important and situation is, is real that uh, the one should also not only just to pray it and, and, and let it off and, and just, you know, yeah, let me pray in, in a few seconds and I just, I just leave. When you pray, you must make sure that you pray with your heart. You come before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the time of the salah with your heart. We talk to Allah in the salah with our heart, not only with our tongue. And our mind is somewhere else, is, left, is in, in, for example, in, in, in leisures and, and pleasures and so forth. Our mind should be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to think about His greatness. The ayat, when I say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, what is Bismillah? What is ar-Rahman? What is ar-Rahim? Or Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen and so forth. To think about these verses when I start to pray. So, Salah is where it brings me near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These times uh, of the day in which we're busy almost, you know, in the morning, in the Fajr time, you're, you're sleeping. You have to wake up and talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the Dhuhr time, in Asr, you're at work or school or college or university. Again, you stop everything and you talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Maghrib and Isha, it depends again if the time is winter time, then you're still at work and, and, and college and so forth. You still have to stop, have a break and sal salah and talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so forth. We are in a position every day and a link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by this prayer. And it's important that we um, respect this salah as we respect our belongings and dwellings and whatever we have. That we keep them nice, clean. We keep the house nice, clean. We keep the car clean and uh, you know, working and so forth. That we keep as well the salah on time and with a correct man manner to pray the salah. And as the hadith says that you pray the salah of farewell, salat muwadda'in. So you pray as if they tell you that to today is your last day in this life. Sure, How man. do we pray? The final prayer. Exactly. The farewell salah, the final prayer. So we try to imagine that we are on our last day of, of life and we pr how do we pray on that last day? With complete attention to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's uh, ibadah and worship and asking Allah for giving and so forth. Ascent on Shaykhna. Shaykhna, 
what are the different types of salah? I know we have wajib, mustahab, but how many like wajib salah are there? Now the wajib salah and obligatory, the main ones are five a day. You start with salat al-subuh, the fajr time, and then you have dhuhr and asr, dhuhr, and then you have the asr, they, they're both separate. And then you have maghrib and isha. Uh, the Maghrib is separate and the Isha is separate. So basically, for the Salat al-Subh, you have two rak'ah to do. And for the Salat al-Dhuhr is four rak'ah. And for the Salat al-Asr is four rak'ah as well. For the Maghrib and Isha, Maghrib is only three rak'ah and the Isha is four. So these are make up 17 rak'ah a day wajib that you have to pray. Of course, there are uh, desirable and mustahab prayers within these Salah which is called Nafila and Ghufayla and so forth, which inshallah will come up later on uh, in the discussion. Is one allowed to perform the Salah before the time or after the time? For example, Mathalan, it's now Maghrib time, I'm going to read Maghrib and Isha. Uh, I feel a bit energetic, I want to pray Isha first and then I can pray Maghrib after that. Is that allowed? No, you have to actually uh, follow the sequence of the Salah. So you begin with Dhuhr first and then Asr, or Maghrib first and then Isha. These are timed, so you cannot actually switch them um, and pray Maghrib uh, after the Isha, for example, or Asr after the uh, Dhuhr after the Asr. So you have to make sure that you, you follow the sequence of these uh, Salah. Shaykhna, when it comes to Fiqh, uh, the Shia school of, of thought gets attacked on that they only pray three times a day and they combine their prayers. From a Fiqhi perspective, is this allowed or not? Well, this issue is mentioned even in the non-Shia books that the Prophet sallallahu he combined the Dhuhr al-Asr al-Maghrib al-Asha without any reason and excuse, such as the rain, for example, um, or the weather, for example. So he combined them afterwards without any reason, any given reason. Uh, let's say the weather is cold or, or it's too hot, for example. And then Ahlul Bayt they did the same thing, they combine the prayer as well. So we are following the tradition of the Prophet when you combine the prayers, as they say in their books, with no reason, given reason or excuse, and as well Ahlul Bayt they combined. So we're following their tradition. And those who want to separate, um, and they say that the, the, the Sunnah is that we have to separate, it is their own opinions. Um, it's against even the narration that they mentioned that the Prophet actually com combined them in his time. Shaykhna, when does Salah become wajib on the Mukallif? And is there any excuse for him not to pray that Salah? The Salah becomes wajib on the Mukallif, uh, the one who reaches the age of puberty and uh, adolescence. So when he becomes Balig, either girl or the boy, they have to start Salah. And the Hukum is like the adults, no difference. Now they have reached the age of Bulugh, they have to begin praying. And it's a good idea uh, for the parents, for the friends, for those who are guardian of the children and so forth, that they teach um, their children in the early ages, let's say for the boys, seven or eight, let them try to practice. And such, such for the girls as well, in the early ages, let's say five, six, so if they can, I mean, uh, it's not wajib, but it's, it's it's good to give them the, the practice and the fear of Salah. And uh, by, for example, buying them gifts, promising for them some uh, pleasure activities, for example, and so forth. Because it's going to be very difficult for the one to uh, tell his uh, children to pray when they are in the age of, let's say, 14 or 15, without any practice before. It's, it's difficult. So they have to be in this stage of uh, teaching them in the age, early ages of, of childhood. Shaykhna, could you briefly explain and describe the times when Salah becomes compulsory? Yes, basically um, for the morning prayer, you have the dawn time, the Fajr time. And it's got its own um, signs and uh, basically it, it can't really be seen in the West, Western world, especially North Europe and they can be seen actually in, in the Middle East. So if that Fajr and Dawn was visible, 
then it is the start of the uh, of the Fajr time. With regard to the Dhuhr and Asr, it begins with the uh, in, in the midday. So when the sun moves to the other side of uh, the earth, so the Salah will be uh, in that time. And you have the Salat al-Maghrib and Asha again. After the sun sets, a while after the sun sets, you see the redness on top of, of your head. Uh, it's where, uh, when that redness comes up from uh, uh, over the head, then the Salat time of the Maghrib begins. So after a while from the sunset. So it's not straight away when the sun sets. No, it's, you have to wait a couple of minutes more. And possibly in Europe you have to wait a, a bit more because you can't see the redness on top of your head, so you have to give it some time. I said, Sheikh, like here in the West, we have extremely short days in the winter time. Um, what happens with someone who goes to work and may not have the opportunity uh, to pray Salah at the prescribed times? Mathalan, we look at in the West, the Dhuhr becomes wajib at 11.45, 11.50, 12 o'clock. And it goes Qadha, Maghrib will start at 4 p.m., maybe 3.55, 3.50. Let's say he doesn't get a break between that period. What does a Mukallif do in that situation? You see, the hadith is clear about the Salah that it cannot be left at all. Um, the Salah must be, must be performed as best as he can or she can. You cannot actually say, well, I'm at work. Uh, four o'clock is the sunset. I can't pray. You know, I go back home by six. You know, the the sky is dark. Uh, I can't pray. You know, it's difficult. And somehow you have to make sure that you create an environment that we can you can pray. You do your best to pray on time. And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will, uh, if you ask Him, He will give the uh, the barakah and the bounties and the grace for those who really seek to pray in such situations, Allah will protect them, will support them, will back them. So you have to try in somehow to find a place, uh, a, a, you know, a quiet place to go and pray. And usually in the West they would respect, the companies would respect, even some colleges, universities, they have prayer room, for example. I've seen myself in some hospitals, they have prayer at room. The, at airports, there's a lot. Which is very good. Um, um, demanding yeah. as well, many Muslims come and pray. So we try to create an environment that we can pray, uh, and we try to keep the time, and not to do qada. Shaykhna, is it allowed for me? Because we live in the West, and I've seen it myself. I've worked here in the West, and I see people ask for toilet breaks, people ask for cigarette breaks, and it's only you know two, three, four minutes. If someone has wudu, can you go to his boss and say, "I'm just going for a cigarette. Quickly go pray and come back." Is this allowed? Is this acceptable in the West? You know, it is better for, for them to be honest um, with their managers, directors, and so forth, the colleagues at work, that I am a Muslim. You know, you're a Muslim. You're, I mean, you, you, can't, you can't hide your identity, you know. And we have to be proud that we're Muslims and believers, alhamdulillah. We have this purity in Islam. We have this great prophet. We have this great book of Allah. And we have great progeny of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. We have to be proud and speak out, even if there are issues within uh, the phobia against the religion and against those who represent the religion. But we have to try to show uh, the good side of the Islam, the positive side, which is all positive. We don't have any negative side of Islam, unless those who are extremists will bring this negativity in Islam. So we try to be honest with them and tell them, listen, we have you know, five, ten minutes of prayer and uh, won't actually contradict and conflict with my work. I'll go somewhere in, in the corner and pray in five, ten minutes and, f and that's it. And the majority would accept, you know, the majority I know that they, they would appreciate and respect. Asan Sheikh, is it possible or do we actually have an excuse to miss the Fajr prayer, the morning prayer, Salat al-Subh? Maybe I've got a a uh, job interview early in the morning Maybe I'm quite stressed out I've got an exam Maybe uh, I'm ill I am, I'm tired I've had an exhausting week Are these excuses for me to Extend my sleep And not to get up for Fajr Salah? 
well, it is absolutely not allowed to um, use these excuses and miss your Salat al-Subuh. There's no way. And it becomes obligatory and wajib for you if you think that the alarm clock can actually wake you up, then you have to use it. Or if somebody you would advise to you know, shake you and, and wake you up, then you have to do so. You must make sure that you have s the means of waking you up. So you cannot just miss it and say, well, uh, I've got work tomorrow or exam and so forth. You have to make sure that uh, you can and you have the means that wakes you up to perform these two rak'ah salah in the morning. Ascension. Sheikh, I've got a question that's been sent in here and it's from a brother. He says that his employer is quite difficult with him, doesn't really allow him to pray, doesn't give him the means or the facilities to pray. Um, maybe he says to him, you can pray later at your own house. This is work, this is not a mosque. What can a mukallif do in a situation like this where his employer makes it difficult and does not allow for him to pray salah at the office or at place of work? Well, if it is not possible for that employee um, to perform the salah in the office hours <clears throat> at his work, then it becomes wajib and obligatory for that person, for that employee, for that staff to actually go and change his job. Okay, so he should leave his job. Exactly. To find another job that they allow him to pray freely, you know, uh, without any obstacles and issues to, uh, be, to be considered for his belief in religion. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will sustain that person, will give him the rizq, will give him more bounties and graces due to um, uh, changing his job for the cause of Allah. Because the whole aim and objective was to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not to please the employer and the manager. So pleasing Allah is the foremost, is the prior than pleasing uh, a person who Allah created. Asan. Sheikhna, I get this excuse a lot. Well, I've heard this excuse. That's how I get it. I, I, I hear this excuse a lot. That so there is a brother, we see him in the mosque, we see him at the Majlis of Abu Abdullah. Yeah, and Akhi, why don't you pray Salah? Oh, you know, I've got a lot of sins on my, on my, you know, my shoulders. I'm not that much of a practicing Muslim. I do Fulan and Fulan and, you know, haram acts. Prayer is not for me, my prayers won't be accepted. Are these actually valid excuses for someone not to pray Salah? Well, one of the great sins, if the one is hopeless and says that, well, because I did such and such bad acts and sins, then I won't pray anymore. That hopeless is greater than him um, of being hopeless in that state than doing the sin. So, so he's actually committing a bigger sin than other sins that he, he does. So there's no excuse for him as well. Um, if he thinks that, uh, well, if I do this bad act, then there's no point of praying. No. The Quran is clear about this issue. It says, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, Inna salata tanha an al wal munkar. Allah says in the, in the whole Quran that praying, the act of performing the prayer, would refrain the one from doing um, um, wrong, wrongdoings and bad deeds. So it actually prevents you, it provides a shield um, to, to prevent the mu'min and the believer to commit the sins. So if that uh, brother uh, would come back and begins his prayers, gradually after months and years, he will find out that many of his sins that he did and committed are eradicated and reduced. And one day he discovers himself to be a mu'min, a believer, and not even committing one sin, inshallah. Hassan Sheikh, thank you so much for this delightful discussion. And thank you to the viewers for joining us on this discussion. If you have any questions in regards to tonight's topic or any other topics, please contact us on the details provided, inshallah, the Sheikh will be able to address your questions. Until next time. Please, please, we pray that you do not neglect your salah. And inshallah, you'll be waking up nice and early, full of energy to pray for your salah, inshallah. Until next time, salamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.
Oh